Hello and welcome everyone. Today I have come up with one more topic on the links payment and uh, it is upon the life cycle of links payment. Here we'll understand today about how the payment flows from the payer till it is received to the pay, right? So let's get started. All right, so in this picture, you can see the typical workflow of a links payment, how the payment flows from payer to pay. Now, uh, this is an example where where the payment flows via the direct participants. Now you could see here, we have the direct participant center side and direct participant receiver side, right? So what it means is these two banks, right? Whatever it be, right? These two banks are the direct participants under the links payment schema, right? So they have this agreement done well before they are sending the payment and there are so many things which takes care in this uh, but, uh, agreements. Now, we are not going to learn about the agreements over here. What we are going to learn is how the payment gets settled and what is the workflow of the payment in the links. Now, let's take an example. I have taken this pair, some organization, or it can be even an individual customer, right? For example, it is a customer credit transfer payment. Uh, payer is a corporate customer and the pay is also corporate customer. Now, they want to make a transfer to pay some amount, Canadian dollar, right? And they use their any of the net banking channel and then they send out this payment information to their account holding institution that is their sending institutions, which is the direct participants in the links. Now, there could be a case where they do not have this direct participant in that circumstances, they need to go ahead with uh, for example, over there, it will go from pair to the indirect direct participants of the links and from indirect direct participant of links. It needs to have a relationship with this direct participant of link, uh, links and th that participant, that bank will act as a, you know, uh, basically the sending direct participants will act as a intermediate institutions who will actually help them to transfer the fund. But let's not go there. So payer initiates using any of its channel. Well, let's take one of the popular one that is our net banking channel and they have sent the instruction and the bank receives the instruction and then bank looks into it, it does its validation and then it will do, it will uh, take the next, next action that is it will debit the payer's uh, account with that amount and then they will send out the misses. Now here, the message will not directly be sent to the links. Now, one of the very important things which we need to understand is links do not provide the messaging services. Links provides clearing and settlement, right? As I told you in my previous sessions also that different different entities can different provide different different uh, facility. For example, Swift provides messaging, message transfer facility. Uh, you know, uh, there can be a separate entity which can provide only clearing and there can be a separate entity which can, which provides only settlement, right? Now here links will do the clearing and settlement, but messaging services is not provided by the links. It takes a third party vendor support service that is Swift. Now Swift is being used in order to send and receive the messages, right? So step number two, what happens is it will send the customer credit transfer payment message whether it be ISO 20 or 22 or be this uh, MT103, right now the transformation is going on. So MT103 for in this example, it will receive at Swift network. So what it does on receiving this message is that it will copy some of the fields of the message. And then what it will do is, for example, uh, the, the, the fields which, will, which it will copy is the sender bank, sender uh, payer, sending direct participant, receiving direct participants, pay amount and date, right? So those kind of information it will capture and then that will be sent to links payment system. 
and then links payment system will do the necessary action as we have already discussed what are the different action that will take care by the links that is it will you know validate on the available fund of this sending direct participant which it has with the links now direct sending direct participant has a master account at the links now links is again you know controlled by the central bank of canada now settlement is done via their master account that's why they have this master account over there i call it a settlement account and they will links on receiving this message via the swift right then they will do the necessary action for example first thing is they will debit the sending direct participants nostril settlement account with the amount whatever they have mentioned and they received in this step number three and then links will do send out this necessary debit advice back to the sending direct participant that it has been debited right that is taken care and then it will credit to the master account of the receiving direct participant which is also available at links now links what it does after that is it will also send out this credit advice saying that hey receiving direct participant your master account has been created now it this all services right is provided by the swift swift is providing all those messages whether it be the payment related messages or the debit or credit advice everything is provided by the swift network itself now step number five is that receiving direct participant on receiving this credit advice what it will do is it will also receive then that message uh, which has this information i mean that customer credit transfer message basically which swift will be sending out anyway to the receiving direct participant uh, right saying that it has to be paid to the pay and all those information would be available like normal mt103 then receiving direct participant what it will do is it will do their validation and then it will you know credit to the pays account so this is what the entire life cycle of a links payment with direct participant in a scenario now there can be a uh, a payment scenario where the payer doesn't have an account with the uh, sending direct participant so payer will have the account with indirect uh, sending uh, uh, indirect participant or non participant of the links and that non participant of the links would need to have a relationship with the sending direct participant so that they can help them make transfer to the payment to the pay so right that we'll discuss in the next uh, session but uh, uh, yeah this is all about this uh, life cycle in a direct payment scenario just in case if you want to learn more about payments swift payment iso 20 or 22 migration we have a courses available and uh, we have already made so much of uh, videos on the syllabus part as well, right? So if you are interested to learn on the SWIFT payment course and also on the ISO 2022 migration. Now ISO 2022 migration is for every high value payment system as well as for the cross-border payments scheme as well. That is for the SWIFT. And that's why if SWIFT is migrating to ISO 2022, that eventually may mix links also to move into uh, trans, I mean, migration into ISO 2022, and also the banks to move into ISO 2022 in terms of sending the messages. So if you want to learn it, or if you want to purchase those uh, videos from me, and uh, you can drop us an email, swiftpaymentguru at gmail.com with your interest on the Swift payment course or the ISO 2022 course. We have the syllabus also already available in the different videos. I'll uh, you can uh, you can watch out over here uh, and and then uh, we'll provide you necessary support on that as well all right so uh, this is all uh, for today and uh, i'll see you next time